It's your boy Malik at Malik's Water Garden. Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to look at why Playcos are so darn expensive. We're sitting in front of my L134 Leopard Frog Tank. The fish are not here yet. They will be here in the next couple of days. So we're going to talk about them a little bit as well as one of some of the many reasons why these fish are so expensive. And uh, I'm going to give you factual information about why they're expensive like collection data and stuff like that as well as some of my personal opinions on the matter so please subscribe if you haven't stay tuned till the end of the video and uh, stay tuned for these fish updates as well as many other cool videos coming up in the channel let's get into this video the rarity of the fish being being able to be collected while in the wild then being endangered or, or threatened in the wild habitat destruction which reduces the population even further them having being seasonal due to the, the, the level the, the water level of the river being high most of the year for not being able to collect them which is probably a good thing for the fish them not being available every year because of either international disputes laws and regulations to save their species or just collection issues whatever it might be as well as smaller cut sizes for some of the smaller species and uh, all these other expenses that go into keeping and breeding these fish I think jacks up their prices what's going on everybody it's your boy Malik at Malik's Water Garden welcome back to the channel we're sitting in front of the newly set up L134 leopard frog tank this tank does not have any fish in it there are some caradina shrimp in there I did go overboard with the filtration I have the corner filter that I told you I'm gonna put I have one of the hang on the back filters, the aqua clears, the, the 30, which is plugged in. The 50 is turned off. I have a matten filter in the back corner over there, which you saw me setting up. If you haven't checked that video, I highly recommend you check that out because that's, that tells you how I set up one of these tanks, the basics. And as well, I have a sponge filter from another tank, which is cycled and it's been going for over a year. So it has a lot of beneficial bacteria. And these two sponges also have better future bacteria and all these decorations and wood have been cycled and in use in other tanks with fish in them so this tank is fully cycled now and ready for fish i am going a little overboard with all these extra filters which i am going to take off eventually that's going to come out the the sponge filter probably a few weeks after having the fish in here once they're comfortable and past like the first few weeks of uh quarantine and uh, the corner filter is coming out around the same time or probably a little bit after that now i'm getting 20 or 25 l134s which are going to be for me there might be 10 more that i'm picking up that i am willing to give away uh, to the right person for the right price so contact me if you are in the greater toronto area or in Ontario and are willing to come pick these fish up from me if you want me to ship them I will not do that only local pickups or if you are willing to drive like I am driving to Gulf which is an hour and a half away from where I live to pick up these fish that's the only way you can get these fish from me is by coming to pick them up or by me coming and dropping them off there's no way I'm gonna ship these fish because they're too valuable and and they are too rare for that type of risk and there's too many people here in Ontario that require that want to get these fish and there's so much demand so I'm not in any rush or anything like that the, the 25 fish that I am keeping for myself I will keep them in this tank till the end of quarantine most likely if there is issues I have the second tank on the bottom ready to go but for now they are gonna stay in this tank and uh, we're gonna split the group up into two groups and keep one group up here for myself and I might decide to sell the second group at that point but I haven't decided that yet so that's something that I might decide in the future in the coming months once I pick my group out first so having said that we are gonna talk about something that was a question a comment actually by Mark one of the subscribers love you buddy and love your fish tanks uh, Mark wanted to know um, why Placos are so darn expensive if they do breed so readily in Aquaria? Now, it's something I actually question quite a lot as well. It's a big question for me 
because these animals are so easy to keep and breed but at the same time when you go and try to buy a pleco it's the, you can't even find them sometimes most of the time zebra plecos you can't find zebra plecos to buy like it, it's not something that you can just call a pet store or go up to a pet go to a pet store and pick up that easily it's very rare to find a zebra pleco i've probably only seen zebra plecos at pet stores like maybe once in my whole life or twice yeah twice two times and uh, both times they were at a very exclusive higher end pet store that that has like pseudocanthicus stingrays discus ultimate angels so all that type of stuff that's the only type of store that you might occasionally see any of these placos available and for sale and why is that like you always wonder right now I'm gonna give you some of the factual information about these fish as well as some of my own opinions I'm gonna to try to differentiate between the two because the factual information is facts and the opinions are my own now the factual information are some of these animals majority of them are very rare because they're either endangered or they only come from a very small area or they're like located in a very isolated part of a small section of the river for example the zebra plecos come from one section of the Rio Zingu they're not found anywhere else in the world except that section of that river and due to over collection by the illegal pet, pet trade as well as habitat destruction farm chemicals mining pollution and all types of other pollutions that are coming out of human activity as well as building of water dams in the river where they live in is fragmenting their population and destroying their population now on top of that they're also very seasonal they can be collected most of these fish actually l134s for example this year we cannot get any wild l134s from brazil they're not coming in this year it's just not going to happen in 2020 so why is that because they're not being collected for some reason right now and uh, they are not gonna my importer told me as well as several other people i talked to because i was actually trying to buy a wild group initially before I and decided to purchase the group that I am picking up I was trying to pick up a wild group and uh, I found out that in 2020 they're not going to be available at all in North America or anywhere else in the world for that matter so now that's factual information why I don't know why they, they're not collecting them maybe something to do with COVID maybe something to do with the river whatever it is they're not collecting them this year that's, how, that's as far as I know so things like that brings the value up right they're highly in demand everybody wants them like no joke there was i think a group available in a local pet store l134 one inch fish for 20 15 or 20 dollars each i think it was 15 dollars but i'm not sure it might have been 20. you know little guys like this big and uh, the advertisement was put up one afternoon or evening I saw the advertisement on the same day I called the pet store and they were already gone they ended up at my friend's house uh, Jerome J Jerome if you're watching you know you have the fish I'm not mad at you but that's how much demand there is for these fish um, also the fish I'm getting there's at least four other people that have that are willing to send me money even now I've told them no because I'm not taking anybody's money without having the fish available so when I go to the breeders house if he does have more than the 25 I'm getting I'm definitely gonna have to pick up more for a few other people that are gonna eat transfer the money while I'm there so that's how much demand there is for this animal which doesn't get collected some years and when it does get collected they can only be collected one part of the year or very short window when this, the river water level is, is at a low point when the rivers are flooded and the water levels are high you cannot collect them because it's just not possible the, the water is too high the animals are all over the place so those things all factor in to the price of the fish now the fact that they are rare seasonally collected as well as some of them being endangered all these are factual information even then you have to factor in the, the the price of the fish the food cost the time it takes to grow these fish the demand for the fish all the expenses that you had to incur before coming to the point of them breeding like 
buying fish that died in the past, any losses that you incurred throughout the process of them breeding, anything that had happened, all the equipment that you had to replace, all the food costs, everything has to factor into the final price of the animal. Now, having factored all these things in, you're looking at this price being similar to what you just paid for the, the original fish. So really and truly, it is lucrative, but you're not going to become an overnight millionaire by breeding and selling fish. It's just not a realistic situation unless you have a large scale factory farm where you're producing hundreds and thousands of fish on a daily basis and you're selling it worldwide and supplying many, many, many different large pet stores. At that point, definitely you can become very wealthy and it's very lucrative. Now with Placos, you can definitely make a lot of money by breeding them on the side and stuff. But again, because the higher demand as well as the limited supply and a lot of these animals being seasonal and uh, also extinct or, or in, sorry, endangered in the wild or threatened makes a huge difference on their final price. Also the fact that they do suffer quite a bit of losses in the shipping process, all these things factor in. Um, but mostly I believe personally is those first mentioned things like the rarity of the fish being being able to be collected while in the wild, then being endangered or, or threatened in the wild, habitat destruction which reduces the population even further, them having being seasonal due to the, the, the level, the, the water level of the river being high most of the year for not being able to collect them, which is probably a good thing for the fish. Them not being available every year because of either international disputes, laws and regulations to save their species or just collection issues, whatever it might be, as well as smaller clutch sizes for some of the smaller species and uh, all these other expenses that go into keeping and breeding these fish, I think jacks up their prices. Now those are some of the things I can think about. If you think there's anything else that I missed, or if you have any other things that you think why their prices are going so high, and if you, if you have anything else you want me to add to this video or to make a separate video about, please comment below and uh, let me know. And uh, also, if you like this content, please hit the like button, and please subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned when this type of, uh, when this week fish come over, and I make that video which is coming out in the next couple of days as always i thank you so much for your support i love you all i'll see you on the next video and hopefully we'll have a video about the l134 leopard flock records thank you so much god bless